Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipak Shikurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 25th of November. Relief for residents as air quality improves marginally in Indian capital. Activist blames Pakistan has nefarious agenda behind Kartarpur corridor. And Nepal struggles to complete infrastructure for South Asian Games. Now for all the details. The air quality in Indian capital continued to improve on Monday morning as increased wind speed blew away some of the toxic particulate matter causing smog in the city. Residents have a sigh of relief with marginal drop in pollution. Residents in pollution hit Indian capital New Delhi on Monday fell marginal relief as an increased wind speed blew away some of the toxic particulate matter causing smoke in the city. More relief is in the offing for the residents as according to India's weather department, New Delhi is expected to receive thunderstorms in the next two days which is expected to settle down the suspended particles of pollutants present in the air. This would give a stick of relief to the smoke-bound city. Though the air quality improved but only marginally, the air quality index or AQI remained in unhealthy levels. This time to ठीक है थोड़ी मौसम मतलब आँखों में जल नहीं है इस दम साफ है थोड़ा मौसम. The U.S. Embassy in New Delhi showed the AQI at unhealthy category with the readings at 185 at 530 GMT. An AQI between 0 to 50 is considered good, 51 to 100 satisfactory. 101 to 200 moderate, 201 to 300 poor, 301 to 400 very poor, and 400 to 500 is marked as severe. An AQI above 500 falls in the severe plus category. उसमें पहले से थोड़ा फर्क है। मैं तो डेली जाता हूँ। आज बिल्कुल तभी मैंने मास्क पे नहीं पहना हुआ। ये तो मुझे रोज During winter each year, most of the northern India suffers from a spike in toxicity in the air due to the change in weather patterns and crop residue burning in the neighboring provinces. As per India Meteorological Department, strong surface winds are expected during daytime that is expected to further improve the air quality. Moving on, activist Amjad Ayub Mirza on Saturday claimed that Pakistan has a nefarious agenda behind opening the Kartarpur corridor with India. The activist said that Pakistani generals had got frustrated after losing stronghold along the Kashmir border and wanted a new territory to hamper peace and harmony in India. Kashmiri activist Amjad Ayub Mirza has said that Pakistan has a devious agenda behind the opening of cross-border Kartarpur corridor with India. Mirza, who lives in exile in Glasgow, said that Pakistani generals had grown desperate after losing the plot along the Kashmir border and wanted an alternative route to hamper peace and harmony in India. Hence, the corridor was opened. The corridor, which was inaugurated earlier this month, allows people from India. to visit a stick shrine in pakistan without a visa kashmir mein jo ye terrorism phaila rahe the uska ab rasta inka ho gaya band aur uska rasta band hone ka matlab ye hai ki pakistan army jo hai jo buniyadi taur par basically pakistan ki ruler hai uske liye ab mushkil ho gaya hai ki wo pakistan ke logon ke upar jis tarah baithi hui hai wo apni justify kar sake apni existence ko लिहाजा अब ये कोशिश कर रहे हैं कि इधर से ये करतारपुरा के खोल के रादारी तो पंजाब में जो है वो पंजाब के ज़रिए जो है जो फंडामेंटलिस्ट हैं पंजाब के हमारे खालिस्तान के लोग खालिस्तानी उनके ज़रिए जो है वो भारत को ये अब छेड़खानी करें Mirza also highlighted the massive repression the common public and activist in Pakistan administered Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan are subjected to by Islamabad. 
The number of anti-Pakistan protests have increased considerably in both the illegally occupied regions. People are taking to the streets demanding Pakistan to vacate and let them live an independent life. Pakistan has already been battling outbreaks of polio and dengue that has affected thousands of people, mostly children. As Pakistan deals with a growing drug resistant strain that raises the risk of typhoid spreading internationally, a mass vaccination drive is being conducted in the country for the disease. A mass vaccination drive is being conducted in Pakistan for typhoid as it deals a growing drug resistant strain that raises the risk of the disease spreading internationally. At least 11,000 people, mostly children, have contracted a drug resistant strain of the infection in the country since 2016. Pakistan's government, already battling outbreaks of polio and dengue, in response has launched a huge foreign funded vaccination drive that began on November 15. Some 3.4 million children have been vaccinated in the last four days that began in Karachi and the neighboring city of Hyderabad, where the outbreak was first reported, said James Fulker, a spokesman for Gavi. For children between 9 months and 15 years. So we're aiming to vaccinate over 10 million children in these two weeks. And in the first two days alone, we've reached around 1.7 million. So we think it's going pretty well so far. Now we are facing a problem of drug resistant typhoid. Typhoid is a nightmare in countries like Pakistan because the hygienic situation is not good. Uh, around two and a half years, we have come across a type of the typhoid which is resistant to all the present drugs. The latest strain is resistant to all but one antibiotic used to treat typhoid, a bacterial infection transmitted by human feces. If it develops resistance to this final antibiotic treatment, disease experts say death rates among those infected could rise dramatically to as much as 20%. In news from Afghanistan, Afghan special forces have claimed that 10 more Islamic State or IS militants have laid down arms and surrendered after a cleanup operation in eastern Nangarhar province. Earlier, more than 600 IS fighters along with their families had surrendered to the Afghan government in the past few weeks. Ten more Islamic State or IS militants have surrendered to the Afghan forces during a cleanup operation in the country's eastern province of Nangarhar, the command of special forces said this weekend. Afghan National Army Special Operations Corps said that the operation was conducted in the militancy-affected Achin district of Nangarhar, where the ten IS fighters laid down arms and surrendered. Nangarhar has long served as the main stronghold of the IS. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani had last week said that security forces have obliterated Islamic State in the province after more than 600 IS fighters, along with their families, surrendered to the government. Officials said air strikes by Afghan and coalition forces, lack of funds and low moral have forced the Islamic State, locally known as Daesh, to give up. Bangladesh Digital Summit 2019 was held over the weekend in capital Dhaka, focusing on the development of smart cities, smart agriculture, smart campus and informatization. Bangladesh Digital Summit 2019 was held on Saturday in capital Dhaka, focusing on the development of smart city, smart agriculture, smart campus and informatization. According to the organizers, including the Institution of Engineers, Bangladesh emerging technologies, including 5G, have been changing livelihood and development patterns of the world. Bangladeshi State Minister for Ministry of Information, Murad Hassan, said, Bangladesh is embarking on a digital transformation aligned with the Vision 2021 and Vision 2041. Bangladesh declared Digital Bangladesh concept in 2008. The rapid digitization of Bangladesh was impossible. Was possible because of enormous efforts of honorable advisor to the honorable prime minister, ICT specialist Mr. Shaji Bhattacharya, and initiatives of ICT division. The Digital Bangladesh program was launched in 2009. It aims to be at the forefront of achieving Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's vision of transforming the country into a digital economy by 2021 
and a knowledge-based economy by the year 2041. Nepal is still struggling to complete the infrastructural work for the 13th South Asian Games starting this weekend. Construction work is also reportedly still underway at the Dasarat Rangasala Stadium, where the opening ceremony of the Games is scheduled to be held. Construction work is still underway at the Dasarat Rangasala Stadium in Nepal's capital Kathmandu, where the opening ceremony of the 13th South Asian Games is scheduled to be held this weekend. An official at the construction site said late assignment of the contract is the reason behind the delay. The Games have previously been postponed thrice due to the untimely completion of the infrastructure work at the stadium. Percentage here that here, our weightage le hisab le here that here, I mean 85 percent saman almost saki saki aso. Our main our dekhine kam bani ko the roofing ke yo. Tere le garda justify karna ali ko. Bola ab thayaro lagna saksa. Meanwhile, sounds of hammering, drilling, wielding can also be heard at the All Nepal Football Association complex in Lalitpur to complete a new swimming facility, where a swimming competition is scheduled to be held from December 5 as part of the tournament. Tiles are yet to be laid on the floor of the swimming pool, after which the process of filling the pool with 900,000 litres of water and heating it would be undertaken, which would take at least 60 hours. This is the third time Nepal is hosting the South Asian Games. A total of seven nations have confirmed their participation in the tournament, which will be held in Kathmandu and Pokhara cities of the Himalayan nation. An eight-year-old girl in southern India has set two world records for breaking tiles with one hand and making the most number of origami models. At such a tender age, the miner is now preparing for martial arts world championships. At a tender age of eight, a girl from Hyderabad city of India, southern Telangana province, has shattered two world records for breaking tiles with one hand and making the most number of origami models. PDV Sharuda has made the records by making 102 origami models and breaking 350 ceramic tiles in 20 minutes each. The previous record in the ceramic tile category was 262, set by a North Korean record holder. Sharuda's records are approved by Elite World Records. And I broke two world records. Those are most number of origami models made by an individual minor female in Banar and the second one is most number of ceramic tiles broken by an individual minor female in 20 minutes. I'm training Saharuda for World Championship and among all the students, she's the brightest student. I can see the confidence in her. Then I selected, as, uh, selected her as a uh, to do world record and her dedication towards art is admirable. Sharuda has so far attempted three world records and broke several national and state records. For the ceramic tile event, she practiced breaking the tiles which were 5 mm thick with her teacher. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. Relief for residents as air quality improves marginally in Indian capital. Activist blames Pakistan has nefarious agenda behind Kartarpur corridor. And Nepal struggles to complete infrastructure for South Asian Games. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.